What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Life of DNA. If you're, if you're little, little, little. Okay, stop. What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's up everybody, welcome back to Life of DNA. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Today, we just want to talk to you guys for a change. We're just going to have a little sit down and talk. So my beautiful, lovely wife over here wants to share her experience on the pregnancy process, the delivery process, and things along those lines. So, it's all yours, babe. Okay, so the first thing is... Everybody when I was pregnant wanted to know like how my pregnancy was um, And how it went so when I was pregnant in the beginning It was horrible the first like five six months of my pregnancy. I was literally so sick like super super sick I was always nauseous Anything I'd like smell like whether it was seafood or like meats or anything I would literally just be super nauseous and I couldn't like keep anything down basically so the first like half more than half of my pregnancy was literally so bad the end got a little bit better but then like the very end like leading towards like the last month or two you guys know how it is like the very last month or two you just yeah <laughs> you, you you ball drop you and blow and up you become like a balloon like your nose gets big your lips get plump <laughs> your stomach you just feel so much heavier it was horrible guys i hated it I liked it, but I hated it at the same time, you know? Yeah. I had, like, my lips looked so full and plump. It looked like I had lip fillers in. But, like, I liked that, you know? Yeah, yeah. That was the only benefit. <laughs> and, and for a lot of people that have been following us and and know about us, they... There goes the baby. <laughs> Let me get her. We have a little grumpy yeah. pants. Oh, yeah, yeah. You remember the camera, right, Baba? A lot of people that have been following us and been there with us and and see everything we post, uh, you guys already know she, my wife is Canadian, I'm American, and we have decided as a family that it would be best if she gave birth in Canada. So I was literally always like back and forth in Canada. So every month for like my checkups or every like month and a half I'd fly down and I get checked up and then like the last two months I think before I was supposed to give birth is when I went down I just stayed there because it, it was so hard you know it was so hard to just keep traveling back and forth so basically whatever my due date came along it was October 16 they gave me two due dates they gave me October 16 2018 and October 22nd of 2018 and the doctor was basically like hey which date do you want and I'm like of course I want the sooner one like I want her out so she's like okay October 16 it is I was like what like you get to pick and choose you know uh, she's like well we're gonna hope and pray that she comes on the 16th but she's most likely gonna come on the 22nd is what my doctor told me so that was like my second visit that I had with that doctor in Canada. She was like the most amazing doctor. She was so great. Literally two months later, I find out my doctor passes away. Yes. And this guy over here and my mother <laughs> were trying to keep it a secret and they didn't want to tell me because they thought that you Guys. Know, I was going to get super emotional. because I was Which she to... did, which she did. And I did, I mean, I <laughs> cried for her. She's my doctor and I wanted her to like, you know, be there for the, the delivery, but Whatever. She passed away. Allah you, Why are you so getting... You're getting teary No, I'm not. I, I mean, see your eyes are red. Guys, I only got emotional. You guys, I only got emotional because I was just scared for myself, to be honest. This, this doctor is the doctor that pretty much do a arrive to this world from this doctor, correct? Yeah, um, I she's, think so. She's the one that... I think so, yeah. She was she's the doctor. Literally, she's been my mom's doctor for years. Like, we've always been going to her. I used to always go to her when I was younger, too. So, she was an amazing... Like, she's an amazing doctor. She's, like, way up there. But she had cancer. And the last visit that I saw her, they said that she was, like, getting cured and she was fine. And then, literally, like, a month later, we find out that she passes away. 
So him and my mom wanted to keep it a secret. They didn't want to upset me, but whatever. I ended up finding out. They were freaking suspicious anyway. <laughs> so I Googled it and whatever. We found out. And he ended up telling me. I that. did. I had to. I had to. But she, she didn't take it lightly. We'll no, I got, I got pretty emotional. You guys, I was pregnant. Like, of course I'm going to get oh, emotional. Shit, uh. They ended up transferring me to another doctor. And she was pretty cool. She was okay. He went to my first visit with me. Whatever. She was decent. I was just kind of fed up in the end. I just wanted to get the baby out. So, uh, October 16, like I said, was the due date. I was in Canada. He was over here in the States. We were like going back and forth discussing like when am I supposed to come down? Do I come down on the 16th? Do I come down a week before? Do I come down a week after? Like when is this baby coming out? And I thought I was going to be extremely late. But subhanAllah, nonetheless, she ended up coming on the due date. Day. She came on October 16th exactly. So as far as the labor goes, you guys. It, it's not as bad as people like told me it would be. Yeah. I was super upset because every single woman I talked to just would always just scare the shit out of me and she'd be like, oh, it would just all be horror stories, literally. Like I'd just be terrified because they scared the shit out of me. They're like, oh, it's, it's the most painful thing you're ever gonna go through and you're gonna have complications because it's your first baby and blah, blah, blah. And they just scared me, you guys. I was terrified, like ask him. I was so she scared. Was. Remember, she I'd was. always complain to you. I'd be like, I don't she, know if I can do this. Was. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I was terrified, you guys. I've literally never been so anxious and scared for something ever in my life. It's just a scary, like, it's scary, you know? It is. It's scary, but it's I... It's so scary, especially because of all, like, the horror stories you hear and everybody having she, complications. She did, she did really well, though. I was really So, impressed. yeah, as far as the labor goes, honestly, um... Things happen so quickly, so easily. Alhamdulillah, it was a natural birth. I did not take any drugs. Hold on, hold on. Get, get back to the beginning. I remember we woke up at like 5.30 in the yeah. morning. She came, she woke me up. We were both sleeping. No, it was like, it was 6 or 7 a.m. I was awake by myself, okay? And I was having like a little bit of cramping and pain. And I'm like, oh, it's probably it's okay, just bro. something it's I okay. ate. Or, you know, like my stomach is just messed up. So I fell back asleep for like a good half hour to an hour and then I woke up again and I was having the same cramp. So I'm like, what the hell, this isn't normal. So I woke him up. He's like, oh, are you going into labor? I'm like, no, I don't think so. He's like, I'm gonna go wake your mom up. I'm like, no, excuse me. I think you should put her down and give her her bottle of it. She's okay. very grumpy and she wants to sleep. Come here, baby, come, come. I love you. He's gonna go put her to sleep, you guys. But anyways, he's literally like, oh, should I wake your mom up? You know, maybe you're like, maybe it's it's here. She's coming. The baby's just coming, you know? It's time. And I'm like, no, 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 Abid. Like, it's literally not time. Just trust me. Let's just go back to sleep. Everything is fine. Literally two seconds later after I said that, I was just throwing up everywhere, you guys. I got super nauseous super super nauseous and that's one of like the sign i'm like okay halas like this baby is coming today you know we're ready to do this so it was like 8 a.m i think or 9 9 a.m i ended up taking a shower whatever we washed up we got ready we packed all our bags for the hospital because like we knew halas she was coming you know right and we got to the hospital like around 9 30 9.30, yes. 9.30. Doctor checked me like to see how far I was dilated. I was literally six centimeters dilated. She was, yeah. And for those who don't know what that means, she's in active like, labor. You're pretty much halfway there. Like the baby's still you're, close You're in active out. labor. You have to be 10 centimeters to like for the baby to actually be on her way out or on his way out. But six centimeters was like, the doctors were in shock. They're like, how could you be six centimeters and be handling the pain this well? But thank God the pain, like the pain, obviously the cramps, they weren't like, they were bad, they were painful, but they weren't like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Like they were very bearable. Like I was able to handle them. So I was so shocked. So the doctor comes in when I was at six centimeters and the nurses were like, oh, if you want the epidural, which is like the, the drug, the needle, so that you don't feel anything. She's like, this is the time to get it if you want it. 
And I'm like, honestly, if the pain is gonna stay like this, I don't need the epidural, you know? Like, I'm good, I'm straight, I could handle this and I could do this. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, I am positive, honey. Like, I'm already six centimeters. I'm pretty much almost done. Like, I could handle it, I could go through this. So the next step was, they had to wait for my water to break, you guys. And I don't know if this is like TMI, but they had to wait for my water to break, basically. It didn't break on its own. They gave it like an hour or so. It didn't break, so they had to break it for me. And once that was broken... Everything happened. Oh, she was shit. In. It was like... That's that's when like... It was like lightning. For the guys out there, when, when you see on like movies, when the, when the wife grabs the husband's hand and yeah. he's in so much pain... I probably like me. ripped his hand off. And you guys so, see how... Where's your hand? Right here. Oh, you don't have the rings on? <laughs> I have. You the... guys normally notice he literally wears like rings on like every other finger. I do. I was squeezing his hand literally. He's like, oh my god. Like all I his rings take, were just. I had to take my rings off. I like squished all his rings into his hand. Oh my god, it was horrible. He was it in was. more pain than I was. I was. I was. <laughs> it but was she, pretty painful. She was in, in labor. She was in labor for what, three hours? It was like four hours. Three or four hours? So. When I got to the hospital, it was like 9.30. By the time like we did all the paperwork and like they signed us in and they got us to our room and like, you know, they checked us. It was probably around like 10.30. Yes, yes. Or 10. And then the baby, she was out at 12. 12.09. 12, 12.09. 12.09. Yeah. October 16th of 2018. Yeah. 12 it was a Tuesday, you guys. It was. We um, were so excited. She was a beauty. Yeah. Honestly, you guys, like, thank the Lord, thank Allah, that things went so smooth. And they say for, like, a first-time mom and for a first-timer who's having their first baby, you're literally in labor for, like, 18 and 24 hours and whatever. So that scared me. That was, like, my biggest fear. Yeah. So for me to be in labor for what four hours and have her out, honestly, the first like half was like a breeze. I barely felt anything. I wasn't on any drugs. But they did give me, you guys, they gave me the gas and air. Like, it's not like a drug, but it helps you a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's so weird because, like, you get high off of it. And, like, by the end, when I was pushing the baby out, I was in so much pain in the end. I was literally like puffing it in every two seconds and the nurse, I still remember her, she looked at me and she's like, hey, you need to calm you're down gonna because you're going to like knock yourself out from this stuff. And I was literally like dozing. She was, she was in and out. Yeah, she was, she was dozing in and out. I don't and remember anything, you guys, after that. I she doesn't. Know. She do Even after she gave birth, she was still out of it. And it took you about a good 10 to 15 minutes to kind of come back you were you were kind of out of it um it was for me it was very emotional as a man i know that a lot of men they usually cry when when they're especially the first child uh, that when they're born that it's kind of like an emotional thing for many men but for me i broke down a little early seeing her in pain and seeing her there it just it was so tough for me I to handle. I don't even remember him crying. All I remember is him like going back and forth to the bathroom. I'm like, where the frig is this guy going every two seconds? Yeah. I he kept going to the bathroom. Our, our Both my mom and her mom, they were in the delivery room with yeah, us. Yeah, that's to, another thing, Like you for guys. support and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which we were very appreciative of because it's our first child and... They, it was good help. to have people around and I had a lot of nurses. The nurses were very, very helpful too. Like they mm -hmm. walked me through everything. Like I feel like the nurses were more helpful than the actual doctor herself. But speaking of the doctor, by the way, you guys. So remember how I told you my doctor passed away so I got transferred to another doctor? That doctor is a snake because remember our last appointment? She didn't, yeah. She told me, she, I'm like, will you be there for the labor and like the delivery? Because I want you there. I trust you. I've been with you for the past couple of months, you know? She's like, 80% I'll be there. She's like, 80% I'll most likely be there. I'm like, okay, perfect. Like, that's good enough for me, you know? I literally get to the hospital and I'm like, hey, where's my doctor? You know, I'm in labor. Do I call her? Do you guys call her? They're like, oh, uh, she's not on call today, so she doesn't, like, she won't come in. She's like, it's whoever's on call, basically. I was like, wow, but she told me literally that she would be in the day that I give birth, but she wasn't. And she but, wanted to, that doctor is so weird, you guys, because I did not like her and I won't go back to her. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to induce me a week early, 
and I was like, why am I getting induced? Like, I'm not overdue, I'm not, there's no complications, there's nothing going on, so like, why are you trying to induce me, you know? So that yeah. bothered me a lot, too. We don't want to give the doctor's name. Of course yeah, we're not going to give her maybe, name, but... Maybe they're, maybe we'll get in trouble, I don't know, but... Nonetheless, we were stuck taking the the doctor that was on duty that day. But the doctor that was on duty, she was like, good. thank the Lord, honestly, she was amazing. She, she was turned really out to good. be Muslim. I think she was like Afghan or something. She was Afghan and her last name was, uh, her name is Dr. Habiba. She was amazing, very, very, very helpful. And I was so thankful to have her, honestly. She was mm -hmm. very, very good. Back to, um, like the pain, the levels of pain and stuff, you guys. So everybody says that labor is so painful, pushing a baby out is painful. It is painful. Um, like literally just near the end is the most painful for me is when the baby was actually coming out. But I think the recovery and like the after postpartum is a lot more painful and stressful than the actual like pregnancy and labor and everything. Mm -hmm. You saw how it was. I, I do. I remember. She took was me in over, a lot of pain. It took me over a month, you guys, to fully, fully recover. Like, what? Not even over a month. Over two months, you guys. I had so many complications after. And I was back and forth to Canada still because I had to go to see, like, doctors and stuff. But I think the recovery was a lot worse than the actual labor itself. And, sure. and on the way back home, back to the States, we had a long drive because I drove out to Canada. So we had... An eight hour journey with a week old baby. Yeah, so. she was a week old. We had to come back to the States for like appointments and things that we had down here. So I was literally in so much pain. I was only a week in, you know, I had a newborn. It was just, it was so hectic. It was very, very tough. And then when I came back here to Canada, literally like the first two weeks, and I know a lot of people talk about this, even when I used to go to like doctor's visits, they'd always give me a sheet about like depression and stress levels and things like that. They're like, oh, like on a scale from one to 10, how stressed are you or, mm -hmm. or how depressed are you? I'm like, what the frog? Like I'm not even de depressed or stressed, you know? What the frog? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even stressed or depressed. So why are they asking me all these questions? Little did I know, postpartum depression is a real thing you guys because i like literally two weeks after i gave birth i was literally just like tears yeah tears. it's it's tough and as a male Very you emotional. really don't know what to do to make your your wife feel better he'd always you know, come up to me tough. and he'd be like why are you crying why are you i'm like <laughs> i don't know why i'm crying i'm just crying like i don't know if it's because of the baby i don't know if it's because this is like new to me i don't know i'm just literally emotional and it's all literally from the whole pregnancy and the labor and the new life, the new baby you have to mm -hmm. care for. Like, it's, it's so it's tough, a team, you guys. It's a not, team having, not having your mom is the most stressful thing, too, because I feel like, especially me, I'm super close with my mom. I feel like I always need her there, especially when I was by her in Canada for the week. She helped me big time. So did my mother-in-law, honestly. I had so much help. But it's just so much harder when you're back, like, at home all alone and you have to just kind of, like, you know, care for the baby by yourself when he's at work or, you know. And and with the first child, it's it's all new. It's you don't know what new. to expect. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how to deal with things. Um, I think for our next child, it's... We have a lot more experience. Now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to know how to act, what to expect, mm -hmm. how things are going to go. And it's just going to be so much easier and smoother mm -hmm. and and the whole travel thing and her missing home and her missing her family and Just they, they play a big role everything. you know I think if her family and, and and she was born and raised in the States it would have been a little easier but the fact that just everything she's comfortable to be around was in a whole nother country just made the, the situation that much yeah, tougher. Yeah it was super tough. I think I got super emotional after it was not only because of the baby and like the new like mom life and I was alone, you know, trying to like figure things out all by myself. But also like he said, uh, my parents were far away from me. I didn't have that like extra support that I wanted. And also because uh, I had the complications after I gave birth and I think that was the most like stressful thing for me. I had to go back to Canada and I had to leave my daughter behind for like four or five days, which is 
so tough on me. It was so tough. So yeah, basically that was our pregnancy slash labor delivery um, video. We really wanted to record. He really wanted to record like at the hospital and stuff, but I just thought it would be awkward. Like yeah. you can't really like show anything, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I was our culture, our, our religion, and, like, things like that. A yeah. lot going on. It, it made it tough. Um, I wanted to record for, for personal reasons also to show her the whole process, but yeah. it was it was exciting and for those that are looking to have a child, we highly, highly suggest it. We highly recommend it. We the connection you have with your baby is just something that's out of this world. Like it's something you never ima imagined mm -hmm. to like have, you know? It's, it is definitely, I th and I, I'm speaking on, on her behalf as well, I think it's the best thing that's ever happened to both of us. Mm -hmm. The October 16th will always be a day that will never fade either of our memories. We remember it like it happened yesterday and we always will, even when we're 40 and 50 and senior citizens eating pancakes and waffles we'll have like five at restaurants cakes. instead of steaks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, guys, if you have any questions for either myself or my beautiful wife, leave them down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and we hope it was informative. We hope it helps you guys with those that are pregnant, those are that are thinking about getting pregnant. One piece of advice I will give those who are pregnant, do not listen to anybody's like pregnancy story. Don't listen to them, just ignore it. Don't go online and like search all these don't, like yeah. terrible videos. I don't that. spook yourself out. Yeah, don't just she like did. don't overthink <laughs> it. You know, don't overthink it. Just guys go in. on our YouTube channel, every time I'd open it, all these pregnant ladies <laughs> going into labor would pop up. That's all I just our wanted people. to prepare myself, you guys. I want and it helped me kind of, but it also scared me. It and you did. don't want to go in scared because you literally will tense up, you get super nervous, you start to yes. get anxious, and everything just goes wrong. So just go in with like a positive mind, you know, be happy, appreciate every little moment that kind of like goes through, whether it's good or bad. Everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason, you guys. And good luck to all those that are pregnant. And yes. about to pop a baby out. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are a couple days late, but we had extreme weather over here and it kind of delayed things, not to find excuses. But we really hope you enjoyed this video. And if this video put a smile on your face, share it with a friend and put a smile on theirs. We'll see you next time. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hey, Abe, we're testing the camera. Is it, is the camera good? Is it even? It's even. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Life of DNA. If you're new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're a returning customer. customer. <laughs> if you're coming back. Oh, I was going to okay. say client. The client. Hey, if... if this is the, <laughs> Let it all out. Yeah! So, alhamdulillah, you guys are not alhamdulillah. I'm speaking as if like we don't have any white people watching. <laughs>